my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path, and this is your Must Know Monday for Monday, October 22nd, 2018. So for the last few seasons, tassels have been really big. You see it in clothing, you see it in jewelry, you see it just about everywhere. But it looks like they're not going anywhere. They're still really, really current um, in fashion. So I started doing some research. I love tassels. The only problem is sometimes you can't find tassels in certain colors that you might need. So I started researching all the different materials that you could use to make tassels with and your different options as to how to make those tassels. So today, that's what we're going to talk about. You can make a tassel with simply a piece of cardboard or you could even use a product like the new Beadalon Tassel Maker. Now, I will tell you between these two, this one ended up being my favorite on how to make tassels. And I'll tell you why. For this cardboard when I made tassels on it I felt like I was sitting there and just rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling the thread onto one of a piece of cardboard and also if you wanted to make multiple sizes of tassels you would need multiple sizes of cardboard or something that you would actually wrap it against. The Beadaline Tassel Maker allows you to make a tassel that's up to three and a half inches so the little pieces are actually adjustable so you don't need multiple things for what one tool can do. So I'm going to actually show you both so that way you can kind of decide and I'm going to show you all the different products that I actually tested to make a tassel. Now mind you, I wanted to make smaller jewelry size tassels so I didn't test fabrics and silks, you know, like all these bigger things. I just tested threads. So each one that I do, I'm going to tell you the thread that I used and how many turns or how many wraps I would have wrapped actually on my cardboard or on my bead -Alon tassel maker. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first tassel that I tried out was using this certain brand here of thread. I used color number 850 as you can see here and this was a polyester thread. I found this thread at Joann's fabric store and they made some really really pretty tassels. My only and they actually lay really well but there's no real movement in the tassel. You can see that it pretty much stays where it is. There's no like movement in those tassels. But this one it's what turned out really, really pretty. And it was a hundred turns using um, either your wrapping method or the bead -Alon tassel maker. The next one I tried was this product. It's by the same company here. It is this brand of thread and I used number 107. Now this thread is 100% silk thread and it made some really pretty tassels. I did these a little bit smaller. Again, they're the same bunch as the yellow. They're 100 turns um, on the maker and so these are just really nice. They lay really, really pretty. Um, again, you don't get a lot of movement in these smaller tassels even with the silk. They kind of stay where they're at. But now I made a longer version of using this same kind and you can see that you get nice movement in the longer version. And I actually put a bead over the top of this with a jump ring so that I could make these into a pair of earrings. And I did 150 wraps on this specific tassel. Okay, so it's, again, that one was silk. I also used color 483 in the silk. Okay, you can see, there we go. And I made this much longer, this really pretty ocean blue tassel. And um, these, you get really good movement in with them being longer. And again, you can see where I added my jump ring here to the top, and I am going to show you how to do that. The next one I tested was by this brand Artiste. I found this at 
Hobby Lobby. Okay, this is metallic floss, so you can see it looks like this. And they made up some really beautiful tassels um, on these pieces. I want to say I did 125 turns on these. You again, you don't get a lot of movement in them, and they just kind of stick out like this if you look at them from the bottom. But they're still really nice, pretty tassels using the Artiste brand here. All right, so the next pair I made, um, I made using the DMC cotton thread. And this is the thread that I used. And you can see with these, you get some movement in these, which is nice. You get really nice movement. Um, and I, you can actually use bead caps like I've used here to make a tassel. Now, I did not separate these whatsoever. I used it exactly like it comes on the spool so that you can see exactly what that tassel is going to look like. So you get a nice tassel. It's just a little thicker and more dense using this DNC thread. The next one I tried, um, I didn't really like at all. This one is using just a craft thread, and this one's variegated in different colors of red, but there is no movement whatsoever in these tassels. And although they're pretty, there's just nothing, I mean, they're just very, I don't know, I don't know, I just didn't like this one as much. Um, I also tested out Coates and Clark. This one you can find at pretty much any craft store. I found this one at Walmart. Um, I bought several colors in this one because I was really thinking about doing something fun with these. I did the shorter version. These are pretty full. These have 150 turns actually on the tassel maker. And I've made three different tassels here because what I actually did was I made a pendant for a friend for Halloween where I connected these and made her something with these. So the Coates and Clark brand works really good. Um, it's just, it doesn't feel as good as your silk ones do. So those are multicolored. And now one last one that I wanted to show you here. This one is actually a dual colored one that I've done. And right now it's just sort of everywhere. Um, this was actually made using silk thread that I found online. It's called Double Bell. I ordered this from Amazon and got an assorted pack that looks like this. Okay, so you get all of these different colors in the little assorted pack for about $10. Um, and the one thing that I will say that really um, was a, is kind of a deal breaker for me is that this polyester thread, or this, I'm sorry, this silk thread did not hold up as well as this other brand of silk thread that I found at Joann's. This one broke really easy when I kept trying to um, tie the threads here. It kept breaking really easy. But um, those are some different things. Oh, and these were 125 turns on the tassel maker. So all of these were different threads, and now I'm going to show you how to make them. All right, so the first one I'm going to show you is the Beadalon tassel maker. Now I'm having to change my uh, camera view a little bit from what I normally do just because of the way that this thing works all right so when you get it it comes in pieces and the first thing you do is you put your little clear suction cups on the bottom of your tool so that way it will stick to your surface and I make sure and press these down really really well the other thing you'll see is you have these two pieces here now these completely come off you have your little post you have a washer and you have your little screw for that. Now you can't, let me see if I can turn it here. There we go. Okay, so you can see it has holes, different holes here on each side of the main screw. So what you wanna do is you want to make these even. And you can see, you can put them all the way out to the last holes or you can make them really small. I wanna make another tassel to match the red and green one that I did. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my my little bar in. I'm going to put the little 
pieces here, my little washers and my little screw, and I'm gonna screw those in and make sure they are nice and tight. Okay, now this is where your thread comes into play. You're going to, I'm gonna be using a red and a green for this one. And I'm actually going to put them in a drawer that is right in front of me here, so that way it'll make it a little bit easier. But to start, if you're gonna use one or two colors, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put both these threads side by side. I'm going to unscrew this piece right here just a little bit and you can see right here in between your two little pieces i'm going to take and i'm going to lay those down right there in between the screw and the washer and then i'm going to screw that back nice and tight so that these threads will not come out and at that point it's just a matter of taking let me put my threads here in the drawer Okay, now I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna start cranking my little crank right here and I'm holding my hand in the same position so that the thread does not move back and forth. It should stay mainly in this same position. And I'm going to turn this, oh, let me get it nice and tight here. Okay, let me get it all back up. Okay, so I'm gonna continue turning this little crank until each time I come down, I'm counting my number of turns that I want. The thing that you wanna think about, like I'm gonna be using two colors. So for mine, even though, say I do 125 or 150 turns, it's gonna be a lot thicker than if I was just gonna use one color. And this is just um, a pressed wood desk, so it doesn't, these little suction cups don't hold great to it, but I did this at my kitchen table the other night, and it held really, really, really well. But this is basically, you're just going to sit here, and you're going to continue to turn and turn and turn and turn until you get the amount that you need on here. So I'm going to continue this, and then I'll be right back with you. So at this point in the process, I've wrapped my thread enough times around my little two bars here for the size tassel that I want. And if I flip it this way, you can see that there is space in between your tassel and you want that for the next step that we're fixing to do. So I have went ahead and trimmed my threads about eight inches um, left from the last turn that I did. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my round nose pliers and I'm gonna grab a hold near the end here with my thread. And I'm going to hold this piece and take my threads and I'm gonna stick them through the opening here in my piece. Now, I'm going to grab a hold of my little loop of thread here and I'm going to stick my fingers in and grab a hold of those two threads that I just had. The reason I'm doing this, this is like a half hitch knot. We need to actually um, capture the end of this so that way we can make our um, the top of our tassel. So I'm going to do that again and I'm going to be careful with the polyester cord. This was really, really easy. Um, with the silk cord, especially this brand, I had to be a little bit more careful because of the fact that it broke easily. So just be aware of that as you choose your thread that you're going to use. So I'm going to put about three little half hitch knots, I guess I would say. So again, I've got my little loop here. I'm taking my ends and then I'm going to stick them through the opening of this loop. Pull it down. Okay, now before I go any further, I want to show you something actually on the beat along instructions so you will be aware of it. So on step 20 of the beat along instructions um, they say that when you take it off your piece should look like this because they want you to tie it at the top and at the bottom I personally just tied at the top and then slide it off and cut these threads here at the bottom if you want to all you have to do to do that other knot is going to be to loosen up your little Thing here. Loosen it up enough to where you can pull this thread out. 
tighten it back up, and then you are going to do your little loops just like I did on this end. You will do that on this end to make your double knots. Otherwise, we're just gonna slide this off. Now to slide it off, okay, you can see right here is where I have this. I'm going to loosen up one of my pieces. I'm not gonna loosen up both, just the one, and then that way it just slides right off of here for me, and then I can tighten this back up to be ready for my next go round. Now, I don't cut, you can see here, the opening. I don't cut my thread here. I'll leave this and actually just tuck it in so it becomes part of my tassel. Now this is where you're gonna need more of your thread. And I'm going to cut off about a foot of thread. <clears throat> so I'm going to grab a hold you can see right here is where i had tied it when it was actually on the tool now i'm going to grab a hold pinch it here at the top and then grab a hold of it and i want it to be compressed here at the top because this is where i'm going to be doing the wrapping of it to hold it into place now before i do that i've already added a jump ring to this one so let's go ahead and do that so that you can see how i add my jump ring if I can find my jump ring. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to slide the thread into here. Make sure you get all your little threads in there. And then I'm going to close this jump ring. All right, now I'm going to grab a hold, pinch it right here at the top, and then this is where I'm going to be using this thread. Now I'm gonna grab a hold. I'm gonna come down just a little bit from the very top and I'm just gonna start wrapping that thread nice and tight. You can keep count of how many times you wrap. Like if you want to say maybe 10 wraps or whatever you want. I it pretty securely um, so that way I don't have to worry about it coming unraveled. So at this point, this is what we're going to have. Now I'm going to take the two ends to this thread that I just used and I'm going to tie these two threads together. Let me find it again. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to just like I'm gonna tie my tennis shoe. Pull that nice and tight. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it to the other side and bring these threads over here. And I'm gonna go under it not once, but twice. You can go under it multiple times, completely up to you. But each time, I'm just gonna flip it and put a few of these knots on each side. And now I'm going to take and Make sure it's nice and secure. And if you still feel like it's not secure enough, you can go ahead and put some more knots in it. Okay, and you can just see that thread broke. So you wanna be easy with this silk. And then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go ahead and trim those threads. Now, I'm gonna use my scissors, and you want a nice, good, sharp pair of scissors, and I'm gonna put them inside of that loop, and I'm just gonna cut straight across on that loop. Now, once you decide, like on this one, I knew that this was gonna be the length that I wanted, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim all these threads to be the same length. If it's your first one, all you have to do is just decide your length and cut. Um, the polyester cord, you can pretty much cut it straight across with no problem. The silk cord, you have to be a little bit more careful with, but this allows me to have both sides exactly the same so that now I have two tassels that are going to match. 
So that is using the Beadalon Tassel Maker. And now this stuff, I'm just gonna throw this little excess away. Right. So now that I've showed you how to use your Beadalon Tassel Maker, now I'm gonna show you how to make tassels just at home with nothing but a piece of cardboard. So I'm gonna be using the orange Coax and Clark thread. And you're going to cut a piece of cardboard to the size that you want your tassel. Okay, so I'm gonna hold Hold my thread here. And now at this point, you just start wrapping. Okay, and you are gonna wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap until you get enough wraps on your cardboard. So I'm gonna continue wrapping and I'll be right back. All right, so I have this thread wrapped around my cardboard and now I have to take a needle and thread and I have to wiggle it underneath my stack of thread here. Now, at this point, I'm going to almost have to bend the cardboard so that I can make sure I'm getting under all of those threads. I'm going to bring it up here to the top, and then I'm going to tie these threads together, just like this. Okay, do it again. I'm going to loop it around again, just like that, and again, I'm going to tie these two threads together. Okay, now you have to bend it. To slide it off and again if you want to tie it at the bottom you can tie it at the bottom as well I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim these threads some people like to take and put a dab of glue when you trim them and that is okay too and now I'm gonna take a different color I'm gonna use purple here because it's so close to Halloween I'm going to again pinch at the top, make sure I've got it together, pinch it, and then again, I'm gonna roll that thread. So that it looks just like that. And now we're gonna tie this, and I'm gonna tie it, trim it, and cut it, and show you what it looks like. So I finished my tassel and here is the finished orange tassel. You can see it gets lots of good movement to it and it turned out to be a really, really pretty tassel. I think it might have to make earrings. But again, that was using the Coates and Clark's just polyester thread. So now you can see how you can make a tassel using just a piece of cardboard at home or the Beadalon tassel maker. Now for this week only, okay, till, let's see, today is the 22nd, so we're going to say through October 27th, if you order the Beadalon tassel maker, we're going to be having this bad boy on sale for $7, okay? So you can order it this week, get it for $7. After that, it's gonna go up to regular retail price. So this is a really fun tool to have. And just me personally, my favorite out of all the stringing materials was um, this silk thread. I think you would say Guterman silk thread that I found at Joann's fabric stores. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned how to make a tassel. And if you make some tassels from this video, please send me a picture and let me see it or post it on our Facebook page. Again, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.